Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco dishing out on the movies. And we're still That talking, was terrible. We're still talking about Stephen King and his movies, and our next one to review is The Dead Zone, which premiered in 1983. Christopher Walken, whose birthday is today, happy birthday, stars as Johnny, an affable, good-natured middle school English teacher who tells his students to read Sleepy Hollow over the weekend. Little does he know that after he drops off his girlfriend Sarah, played by Brooke Adams, in the pouring rain, that he will crash into a runaway semi-cargo trailer that puts him in a coma for five years. Personally, the car crash was a little disconcerting since I ran into a water delivery truck back in December, a half block away from our home. Fortunately, I was able to swerve away and it knocked out only the right side of my car. And I wasn't even in the car because I was sick. Ha, ha, ha. <clears throat> yes, it would have been a problem for him. That's, no, why, she, that's why she was out. She, I, I couldn't even eat. I was like choking, choking up the chicken soup I was eating. And so Sophie had to go out and get me this medicine. It was a tea and it didn't even work. It gave me diarrhea as well. <laughs> Oh boy. No coma for me, and of course no coma for Marco because he wasn't even in the car. Just sore legs, but unfortunately I totaled my car. Oh well, back to the story. As I said before, Johnny woke up after being in a coma for five years in a clinic run by Dr. Sam Wyzek, played by Herbert Lum. Later on, while he rests, a nurse checks up on Johnny and notices that he is sweating. She begins wiping his face with a wet rag. He wakes up suddenly and grabs her hand and sees a room on fire. A little girl is sitting in the corner, unable to escape. The nurse finds out that it is her daughter when he says her name. And he tells her if she goes now, her daughter will be all right. All that comes true, and he gains notoriety for this occurrence. His newfound psychic ability surfaces again later, when he accidentally grabs Dr. Wyzek's hand and sees a past vision of the doctor's childhood. The doctor's mother is sending him away to be safe from Nazis. But Dr. Wyzek believed that she had not escaped and died. However, Johnny tells him that she is still alive. When he calls her, though, Dr. Wyzek won't talk to her. I didn't understand that. Johnny returns home to live with his father for a while. As his notoriety grows, people send him boatloads of mail, asking for his help but he refuses to open their letters. He just wants to be left alone. I'm not sure I understand that either. Even the local sheriff, played by Tom Skerritt, asked for his help. There is a serial killer in the area, and he has exhausted all the leads. Johnny refuses. Will he change his mind, and what will happen next? <laughs> okay, Marco. Take it away. Out of all the Stephen King movies this month, this is my least favorite that we've reviewed. And and it's unsurprising to me because I picked this movie just to pick a movie. I, I wasn't really... Because I, I've seen a lot of Stephen King's movies. Aside the awful uh, TV ones, most of them. I, I've, I've seen a lot. Even the sequels to Children of Corn, that tells you how much of a fan I really am. And this movie, I was expecting good things because of Christopher Walken and uh, Michael Sheen. Or, oh wait, no, Martin Sheen. 
<laughs> I got confused for a second because he he did such an awful job. I'll talk about that later because Sophie's gonna Sophie's gonna throw a tantrum again. And so this movie was very fragmented to me. I thought almost like it was broken up into chapters. It, in fact, if you want to compare this movie to any other movie, which that would be really fun, wouldn't it? could have a show called Frankenstein at the Movies. And you could watch a movie and then say, this movie is, is basically this movie plus this movie. Like a Frankenstein monster. That sounds fun. Uh, this movie is basically like Great Expectations, in my opinion. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Great Expectations meets Scanners. And Scanners, speaking of which, is one of the best horror movies of all time, in my opinion. It's also directed by David Cronenberg and written by him. And it's all about, just like with this movie, people with psychic powers. And in fact, in Scanners, they use the psychic powers to hurt people, to make their heads explode, to do lots of things. There's even a, a part in the movie where uh, the the guy's the main character's head starts hurting, and he realizes that there's this woman there and she's pregnant, and she's pregnant with the scanner baby, and I thought that was really cool, and and in this movie, I, the, his direction really shines through as one of the best parts of the movie, but as I said, it's very fragmented. There's not really any through line besides Christopher Walken, who, by the way, is also the best part of the movie. His performance really carries the movie. If Christopher Walken wasn't in this movie, it would be a garbage. What do you have to say, Safi? Well, I do you agree, agree with that. I think Christopher yeah. Walken is his performance is really good, and he's the best. Uh, it's one of his uh, best performances, and he uh, he was also in another movie a few years back, The Deer Hunter, and I thought that this had to come out at the same time because he looked young, very young, and, but he just, he's really good, and he tied the whole movie together, and I agree with Marco that if he hadn't been in the movie, I don't think it would have worked as well. Not even close. No. Another issue with this movie is the girlfriend. The main character has a girlfriend. It seems like they're trying to make this into Sleepy Hollow. Like Sleepy Hollow meets uh, Psychic Powers because the girlfriend changes over the time he gets in a coma. But she doesn't really change, and she has this jerk uh, husband, and you know, you know, it's a lot like Sleepy Hollow in a sense. But her character is just uh, the worst. I mean, she's very flip floppy. There's not really any point to her character besides she's basically an object he can't have, and I'm not saying that as as like. Uh, anything in real life I'm saying is, is a character her character was written as like an object that he can't have and I, I her character is just I, I don't know what, what he was thinking when he wrote her character because in the first scene of the movie she's her and him their relationship is the focus and after that first section, it never really becomes the entire focus again, at all. So. Well, I thought she was a very questionable character, too. She just she just popped up like a jack in the box intermittently throughout the movie, although her presence in the movie played a significant part in its conclusion. I thought she was weak and. Uh, that she treated him like a favorite book that she picked up on a whim and then puts back on a shelf. She 
in the middle of the movie, she visits him for one day. She had, see, she's already told him, like when he was back in the clinic, that she had gotten married. Which he had already been told by his mother and father when he woke up. But then she also uh, made it even worse by saying, oh yeah, and she just, and she had a baby too. She yeah, had a one she, year old boy. She brings her child to his house <coughs> and then has sex with him. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. And, and, cooks, and cooks them and his father dinner. And then she just leaves. And says so she's this. She's never gonna come back. And I thought, why? What? What was that about? What a disgusting person. I thought it was. Uh, it really put me off. I yeah. really didn't like it. And then she shows up in the end, and like I said, she plays a part in the conclusion of the movie. So I guess her presence. She doesn't there, really pr- play a part. She's just an object that he can't attain. Well, I really don't agree with that, but I can't say her why. Her character, not her as a person. Her character was written that way. Okay. To where, you know, she's just there. She's just there. She's not a character who ever goes through any changes. She just stays this object that he can't have the whole movie. And it's because he keeps reading uh, The Raven, where the guy talks about how he can't have uh, Lenore, and uh, and he'll never be able to have her again, and he's in love with her. It's exactly like in this movie. She's not really a character. She's just an object. And speaking of objects, well, not really an object, kind of an object, more of a political object. We all know Stephen King is a certain way politically, and that comes through in this movie, in Spades. The character played by Martin Sheen is basically, I mean, you know, you know how a lot of movies and TV shows today have a, a Trump-like character. Well, this is basically his Trump-like character in this movie, and I, I mean, he's he's a stereotype. And speaking of bad acting, this is probably the worst performance I've ever seen out of a Stephen King movie this month. It it comes it it just slightly edges out uh, Nadine and the stand, which is very hard to do since they tried to make you feel sorry for him and like her. But in this movie, it was clear, obviously, since he's not a liberal, you're supposed to hate him. And he's Hitler. And that's a, that's literally what they say in this movie. Near the end, there's this guy talking, uh, they're talking about Hitler. Like, WTF? Why is that in this movie? It's supposed to be about a guy with psychic powers helping people, not helping people. And this character is just horrible. And the acting is even worse. He's overdoing it, really. He's, he's really doing a poor job, which is surprising since he is uh, really good in uh, Wall Street, uh, Martin Sheen. And I, I don't like the movie Apocalypse Now, but he was good in that too. He was actually my favorite part of that movie. So, what do you think about his character, Safi? Do you think he overdoes it a little bit? Actually, no. I thought he... He was playing a corrupt individual running for office, and the horrible thing that happens at the end uh, is why, uh, well, he wasn't just corrupt, he was evil, but I can't, I don't want to say anything more about that, but I thought he did a really good job. It's just that he po- he pops up in the beginning when... Uh, his name pops up. He his does. name pops up, not him, and he... Uh, uh, it's when uh, Johnny is still at the clinic and they talk about this incident with the nurse and this is about the notoriety and they ask him about they say well are you going to vote in the election are you going to vote for this guy no they don't say that they say oh is, uh, is this guy going to win the election well yeah they're trying to test his psychic ability 
And he says, I, I don't even know who that is. And so, uh, what, I, I guess I had an, uh, what I thought was going to happen was not what happened. It was totally, his, his part in the movie, Martin Sheen's part, really, uh, what happens the, with the whole thing is totally unexpected. That's why it was a really good twist. Same with me. I thought that he, I thought his character was going to have a much bigger part. I thought either he would try to use Christopher Walken to win the election somehow, or he would turn the town against Christopher Walken, have everyone kind of hate him. Yeah. Somehow. That's because that's that's that that would have been the thing Stephen King would do. So but no, that that didn't happen. But still, what what happened was very unexpected. That's why it's worth watching. The twist is probably is one of the best parts. It is a very good part. It's a good twist. Totally unexpected. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> and it also showed something in Christopher Walken's character too, because he. His his character was very good. Can't keep saying that enough. Well, and another character who was really good was the, uh, the young little boy. boy. He helped uh, near the end. He was tutoring him, which he was teaching, which it seems like that's what he really likes to do. And it makes him happiest. And uh, he has a connection with the boy. And because the boy just treats him like a normal person. He's not asking for things and that section was my them. favorite part of the movie yeah and it's a interesting too the corrupt politician shows up in that part of the movie trying to get money like you know financial support from uh the boy's father so he's very rich and uh but the boy is very uh he's just uh wants to be a kid and he wants to be on the computer, and he and he wants to read, and just live, you know, the way he wants to live. And so he, it was just that part. He did a really good job acting, and I just thought that that part of the movie was one of my favorite parts. Even though it it wasn't exciting or anything, but it just was. Well, I guess there was a part of it that got to be very interesting, but um, I don't want to say anything about that. It's such a short movie that if we gave away anything, I mean, that'd be the whole movie. Because not like The Stand and Rose Red, where it was a miniseries and dragged out for days. This, this is a very short, succinct movie. It's so. not succinct at all. It's succinct in it that it's not dragged up, out. It, it breaks up into, it's like you take a, a glass and then shatter it on the floor, and then you look at each piece of glass, and that's the movie. The reason why I talk about Martin Sheen's character being so terrible is because every other character in this movie, aside the girlfriend, is a great character. They're great characters. They're 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 interesting. They're they're you're, they're all unique in their own way, except for these two characters. So they really stand out. And and so I think the biggest issue with this movie is story, and the script. The script really should have been redone. So what's your rating for this movie, Safi? Okay, well, the only food to which I can compare the entire movie is Swiss cheese. I like Swiss cheese, but there are holes in it that represent the many questions I have about the story. The supporting characters like the doctor, the dad, the girlfriend, and the young boy are like a bunch of grapes. In order to make a bunch, they all have to be there to move the story forward. And the young boy he tutors, he's also like a piece of sorpresetta, full of character and spice and complete as a character. Martin Sheen's character, a horrible slimy man named Greg Stilson, is like a cut up jalapeno pepper that you don't know was in your food, that you didn't, sorry, that you didn't know was in your food. It totally shocks you, but adds to the overall dish. He is a fine actor who played one of the slimiest, most evil characters in the Dead Zone that I have ever seen him play. 
And so I would recommend watching The Dead Zone. It's short, and I would be curious as to if others had as many questions about it as me. And in fact, I'm thinking about reading the book to see if the questions were just things that were overlooked when making the movie and they're not addressed and maybe they are addressed in the book and I don't know how long Stephen King's books for the most part are very long and uh, I don't know except the Dead Zone is such a short movie it seems like it would be a shorter book we'll have to see that's it for me what about you Marco how did you rate the movie here's here's you want to know how bad Martin Sheen's character is in terms of acting, character, writing. You want you want to know how bad he is. He did a better job in Spawn than he did in this movie. He did a better job at playing a bad guy in Spawn. Just think about that. Spawn. I'm talking about the movie in the 90s called Spawn. Go watch it, and you'll see how better he is in that one than he is in this one. And his character isn't a political mouthpiece by Stephen King either, so that's good. And I would rate this movie, I was thinking about rating it a bunch of different little plates of food, like a bunch of different appetizers, but not really a full dish. But I thought that would be too much like Infinity War. And so what I ended up doing is this movie is a restaurant hamburger. So you go to a, a hotel restaurant and they don't really have anything good. So you get a cheeseburger and fries and ketchup and a drink. So the burger represents Christopher Walken's multi-complex character, I mean multi-layer character and his acting. This whole hamburger, it's a great juicy cheeseburger, it's got cheese, it's got lettuce, which I take off because I don't like lettuce on hamburgers. I take off the tomato too, uh, but I leave the bacon on and then I put the ketchup and mustard on, it's perfect. But then, on the side, you have soggy french fries. Have you ever had soggy french fries? I've had french fries to where they're literally just like potatoes dipped in vegetable oil. Mm. That was from City Barbecue. And <laughs> they don't, they don't do, they never do bad fries. Their fries are like the best thing that they have. But there was one time where they were a little off their rocker and I literally they were just covered in oil and that that is what represents guess who Martin Sheen and the girlfriend those fries are some side characters that need to go need to get off the plate before I uh, beat up the waiter <laughs> which I won't do that <laughs> And then the drink. So I'm I'm not 21 yet. I'll be 21 in December. Uh, but I, I probably won't drink much anyway because I work out and drinking is bad for people who want to be healthy. <laughs> and so they accidentally gave me alcohol. And you know how bad that is? given uh, people underage alcohol and you have a liquor license uh-oh and that represents the sort of script that this movie had the script was very drunk it was very all over the place like oh I'm just gonna go over here and do this I'm gonna go over here and do this I, I mean every time in the movie where you think that there's gonna be a storyline that 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 goes through it just ends and then another storyline begins and another one and then another one and so that's it's really drunk I mean whoever wrote the script was drunk they were on something they weren't <laughs> thinking straight 
they, they were thinking zigzag. They weren't thinking straight. <laughs> That's what I think of this movie. Really quickly for the spoilers, I was expecting, if this was to be a real movie, I was expecting for the girlfriend to be with Greg Stilson. Mm. I yeah. thought that was going to happen. Yeah. Or I thought... Something, something else. There's not really anything else to say in spoilers except for the fact that this movie was all over the place. Oh, I I thought Martin Sheen was going to be the serial killer. Well, yeah, yeah. You thought that too. Well, I just, uh, what happened with him was just extremely unexpected. I just couldn't believe it. I, and, and, there's so many other things he could have done with this character, actually. Like you said, he could have been the serial killer. A lot of things. Yeah, I thought he was going to be a serial killer. I thought that the whole movie would be about the serial killer. And just like I said, once the storyline begins, it ends. That should be the tagline for this movie. In fact, I'll put that in the, the description. Oh, and happy birthday to Christopher Walken. Right, Safi? Right. Happy birthday, Christopher Walken. And now we're going to end the video. Please subscribe to our channel. And then watch out for the Silver Bullet review coming up next week. Along with a retrospective video where we talk about how these movies fit into our Stephen King movies ranked best to worst. So, goodbye, everybody. Bye.